Hi, everyone. Um, I, I'm going to do a little something a little different today. I get many presents and gifts, books and um, and uh, and sometimes videos and whatnot. I, I get a lot of things, but I rarely get anything like this. This is really kind of special and spectacular for me. Um, this was sent to me by um, Jim Wheeler on behalf of uh, Dan Pacey and himself from uh, Saskatoon, um, Saskatchewan. I, uh, I am totally blown away by this and the reason for that is because of the thought process and the effort that went into it. I do some carving so I know how much time it would take to do high relief like this, but the real big message is on the back here uh, telling you what it all means. So the eagle, the flame, and the gear combined to form the infinity symbol, open-ended to represent extensions of the new universes, looking beyond. Separately, the fire symbolizes the flame of burning desire. Passion is always to improve. The gear obviously is a trademark of a, the engineering image. The eagle portrays majesty, courage, strength, inspiration, and longevity and freedom, the king of the skies. The eagle's wing covers the edge, it comes over the side here. And, uh, and basically that's thinking, uh, thinking outside of the box, over the edge as in doing things radically different. And finally, the eagle's beak is open, illustrating speaking and consulting. I don't know, I'm not good at this. I, I could never have gotten anything done uh, quite like this, uh, this thing. And I, I really thank these guys a lot. I tried to send uh, some gifts. <laughs> I'm trying again, actually. But um, uh, the mail and, uh, <clears throat> and UPS has let me down. But I'm going to try again. I just like sincerely thank, um, um, I'd sincerely like to thank uh, uh, Jim and, um, and Dan and Pacey um, for this wonderful uh, gift. And it's going to sit above my desk uh, like forever. I, I, I'm really, really impressed. Thank you so much. And uh, now we can get to the second part of uh, Monroe Live. Thank you for listening. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, I've got with me uh, UV uh, from Savic, and um, he's going to talk to us a little bit about, we've heard lots of, uh, lots of people talking about how, oh, plastic and oil and blah, blah. But, uh, but at the end of the day, um, no matter what it is, you're going to be pulling it out of the ground. Um, I think that what we have to know is a little bit more about why it is that plastic is not such a bad thing after all, and what the alternatives might be. And we'll show you that on the on the Model Three, or sorry, the the Plaid battery pack. So uh, UV, I, I'd like you to just give us a little background or history, uh, you know, a little learning session on, uh, on plastics. Sounds good, Sandy. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here with you and all of your associates. It's always a very invigorating environment to come into and see what's going on here. Um, I think when it comes to plastics and how plastics is utilized, especially in the automotive industry, uh, it, no, it's been responsible for displacing a whole bunch of weight no, on cars. Now, if you look at the 1950s, you know, the materials prim primarily that was used is steel. Uh, yeah. Now you have a combination of different materials, and it's not to say that one material is perfect for everything. Uh, plastics has been uh, around for quite some time and it has increased. You know, today, there's roughly about 200 kilograms of plastics on a car that uh, helps to displace uh, quite a bit of weight. Uh, and it also you know, helps in terms of the styling and the aerodynamics. So, not only it, uh, is it important from a light weighting standpoint, but from uh, assembly ergonomics, from combining uh, you know, a bunch of different parts into one assembly, uh, reducing the labor time, improving uh, corrosion resistance and uh, durability. So a variety of different uh, benefits that uh, plastics bring. Uh, and it's a combination of the right materials you know, that is important. And I think the industry still continues to learn how to use mixed materials to be successful. Uh, and I'm happy to say that we are at the point for the plastics industry as a whole 
uh, where gone are the days that it's a simple dust cover to now we are making very complex geometry and systems possible. Right. Uh, so I think there's a bunch of benefits that go with uh, <coughs> plastics. Uh, you know, there is always the uh, uh, question in terms of plastics being tied to the oil. Uh, and as you rightly pointed out, everything comes out of the ground. Now, everything has an environmental footprint. But the way plastics come into the picture is only about 8 to 10 percent of the oil that we pull out is converted to plastics globally. And uh, all of that uh, helps uh, you know, primarily in durables you know, as well as in disposables and packaging. Uh, so when the waste recovery happens, I think we'll get to the point where a lot of the materials start to get reused. We're already entering right. that era of recycling. Mm -hmm. So you'll start to see a lot more of circularity where we put plastic products out there, they get recovered and go back into creating new parts. Right. Yeah, so everybody keeps uh, throwing rocks at, um, <clears throat> at oil and things like that, and that's fine. Um, you can think whatever you want, but at the end of the day, if you've been to an open pit mine um, and you look at the devastation that happens to the earth when you look at that versus an oil well that relatively clean, no dust, no great big giant generator, or not generators, but bulldozers and, and earth movers and whatnot. Um, it, and then the fact that a lot of the plastic is recyclable. So you can take it and use it over and over and over again. Plus, because it's lighter, because it's lighter weight, guess what? It means that we get, we get, we use less energy in order to get to the places we want to get to. And I just think that what we need to do here is clear the air a bit about what plastic is, does, and how it impacts um, your daily life. I'm not a fan of, um, of uh, little plastic bottles uh, filling up the ocean. But uh, by the same token, I'm not, a, I'm not a huge fan of open pit mining so we can get to the iron ore that's on, underneath. So I think, that, uh, I think that what we have to do is take everything into consideration. And when you do that, plastic is a very good environmentally uh, sound uh, application, at least for the automobile industry, because most everything <clears throat> in a car is recycled. Yeah. No, I completely agree, and I think the best part about plastics is it takes a lot less energy you know, in yeah. terms of converting plastics into useful products. Uh, like you pointed out, the transportation is much easier, it's yeah. much lighter, you can pack a whole lot more in your truck you know, mm. if you're transporting. Yeah. Uh, and then on cars, of course, you know, uh, I think it improves uh, fuel economy, whether it's gas engines or the range, if it's uh, electric vehicles. Yeah. So with that, we, we've talked a little bit before about, you know, what we had in a way of an idea, making the, making the battery tray out of, um, out of uh, uh, Staymac um, um, RF, and, and we think it's a good idea. But let's, uh, let's, see what, let's see what this might look like if we have a look at the plaid right next door. So let's walk around here. <clears throat> So this is the battery tray for the uh, Tesla Model S Plaid. And the first thing that you see when you uh, remove the steel cover, this is a steel cover. And by the way, this is glued down significantly. And the first thing you see is um, these three great big giant sheets of mica. Okay, so mica is mined. It's a mineral. And then it's uh, compressed and you add adhesives and whatnot and you make this component. Now this component is so that if you do get a fire, this product right here will contain it. it it'll try to contain it for a while anyway. Now this has to be backed up by this giant piece of steel. So picture what could happen if we took this piece of mica out and we took that piece of steel out and we put one great big giant piece of, um, of plastic. I, I hate to use the word plastic because it doesn't mean anything, but uh, a great big giant piece of composite that would be structurally song, sound. And we've shown you in the past how we've done that. Structurally sound. And on top of that, 
not only structurally sound, but fire, re uh, well, RF is uh, fire resistant. We've already seen that this will do everything that, a, mm. that, uh, that mica and, uh, and a chunk of aluminum will do. But this way, I get rid of this component, which I'm sure is going to be expensive and is w relatively heavy, and this component, which um, really and truly doesn't really need to be uh, made out of steel. It, um, it could easily, <coughs> easily trans, uh, transpose into, uh, into the same material we were talking about for the battery tray on the other side. So um, anyway, uh, I, I'll let you have the closing words there. And no, thank you, Sandy. <laughs> I think uh, you pointed out a, a lot of different benefits in terms of integrating all these pieces into one. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Staymax from Sabic, it's a fire retardant, you know, fire resistant uh, polypropylene. Uh, and th the nice thing is people tend to think it's a piece of plastic, it's going to catch fire. But no, plastics can be made uh, you know, flame retardant. And the unique property about the Staymax FR product is uh, it creates an intuminous, and so you know, when it develops a char, char is our friend. You know, char is an insulator right. from uh, you know, thermally as well as from a fire standpoint, so it becomes very self-protecting you know, as it chars. Yeah. Um, so you know, one piece is possible. It's possible to take out a lot of you know, what you're seeing, either as a thermal blanket or, or as a mica in this particular case, uh, as well as a structural housing and the cover. Uh, all of that to be integrated from a functionality standpoint. Uh, as well as from you know, providing more features, you could integrate you know, for the connectors, uh, right. bus bars, etc., you know, as appropriate, uh, and the cooling channels as appropriate you know, into it as well. So I think all of that is possible, and we've demonstrated that. Uh, the industry struggles with the standardized um, you no know, fire resistance test, uh, and now UL is taking a lead uh, role as well in developing a test. Uh, that the industry can adapt as a universal practice. Uh, and I'm happy to say that we've already done some of the preliminary testing uh, and a four millimeter thick no Staymax will uh, survive the test beautifully. Mm. Um, so I think that will come as a surprise to many people when you witness the testing that goes on and how aluminum can burn a big hole through it right. uh, while the plastic <coughs> maintains all of its integrity. Mm -hmm. right. Well, I can just tell you that from a weight standpoint between this and that, the weight would go down significantly. And again, what do we want to try and get rid of? Weight. Weight is our enemy uh, with electric vehicles. The more weight we can get rid of, the more uh, traveling we can do and the less charge we'll need. So with that, let's, uh, I think we can wrap it up. Great, thank you. Thank you again for the opportunity. And I'm glad I was able to come out and give a few pointers on use of plastics in battery packs. Great. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. And uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. There'll be more uh, little informative things like this on not just uh, plastics or composites, uh, but uh, pretty much all the materials that we're looking at because um, really there is no such thing as a one universal perfect material for everything. It just doesn't happen. So anyway, stay tuned and we'll see you later. Bye. Thank you.